Hello, everybody. Everyone is sat down behind you, sir. Thank you. Um, <laughs> welcome to Harvest Orange County. <laughs> How many of you are here for the first time tonight? You've never been to Harvest Orange County. Great. Welcome to all of you. Okay, well, a couple of things before we get started. Uh, you guys can participate in this conversation, and the way that you do it is by texting in your question. We have a dedicated line for that, and uh, the, line, the number is 949. Just pull your phone out right now. Just type this number in, 949-407. It's up on the screen, 5330, okay? So if you text your question, that's fed to me on this little iPad here, so I may get to your question through this conversation. So keep your questions to the topic of Bible prophecy, because that's what we're talking about. There's a lot of other great questions to deal with, but tonight we're focusing on that. As you all know, we're in a series on Thursday nights that we call Essentials. And we're going through those essential things that every Christian needs to know. And we're in a section now where we're talking about Bible prophecy. This is one subject people always want to hear about. And it seems like no matter how much you teach on it, people still have questions, questions, and more questions. So we're going to try to answer some of those questions. So I want you to welcome uh, a man who knows quite a bit about this subject, our friend Don Stewart. Don, come on out. Oh, good. Thank you, Don. Everybody. I have this one. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. All right, Don, how you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing, Greg? I'm great. So Don uh, and I do the Pastor's Perspective show every Wednesday. You know, every other name of the Pastor's Perspective days, it's like, what is Monday called? Mystery Monday. Mystery Monday. Because we have mystery guests. Yeah. And then Tuesday is called... Terrific Tuesday. And then the day that I'm on is called Wild Wednesday. I wonder why. That's disturbing to me. It's like, why am I the only guy who's wild? I don't know. I give up. Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I, as you ask those questions, I'll come in here to the screen so you can start sending them now. A uh, couple of books we want to bring to your attention. Don has just written a brand new book called The Rapture on the topic of the rapture. Don, was this hard to come up with this title? It took a long time to come up with that title. The Rapture. The Rapture. So we're going to talk about this quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, I've written a book on the subject, or the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation, the next dimension. We have these all available at the book table. Here's a book that Don did a while back. <laughs> it's, uh, look up on the screen, Don. You'll see it. We okay. have a, I know Greek and you don't, Don Stewart. Okay. And uh, if you look closely, it's kind of like a, a bust, a sort of a Greek bust, and that's your face there. That's, that's, yeah, okay. Why did you pick such an arrogant title for a book? Well, Greg, I just follow you and your lead, you know. I, I look at all your books and what can I... Actually, we mocked this up in our design department. This book does not exist. It's a joke. It does now. I've got it. Okay. <laughs> what am I bid for this? That's your copy. Have fun. Thank you. I know, Greg, and you don't. All right. Well, why okay. don't we start with a word of prayer? Yeah. Father, we're talking about a very weighty and serious subject, but a joyful one, too, as we think about the great hope, the blessed hope, we have as your followers that we will one day be caught up to meet you in the air. Now, we may be that generation. We really hope we are that generation. But even if we aren't, because we put our faith in you, we know that we will get to heaven. But uh, Lord, as we think about our world and we think about the times we're living in, uh, give us clarity and understanding. Uh, we want to know what these things mean and understand them. So open our eyes spiritually and bless this conversation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys texting those questions? Who's texted a question already? Hey, way to participate. Come on. Come on. You can do it. All right, we'll keep that number on the screen uh, in the back video room, if you don't mind. All right, let's just start off with a real simple question, Don. Why do you believe we're living in the last days? Kind of prefacing that with a lot of people have believed this historically. And... There have even been people who have been named as the potential antichrist. And so here we are now saying, it's the last days. Why would that be true of perhaps our time more than any other? I think one of the reasons, Greg, is we see... It's interesting. You know, Don... <laughs> uh, this is just like Wednesday. This I is what we do on Wednesdays. This every week. He's so smart, he frightens me. I'm sorry, Don. <laughs> go ahead. That's okay. 
Are we finished? I like you in the blue shirt. That's you do? Okay, I like you in yours too. We're about to, okay. That's making me uncomfortable. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't like you that much. I know. Okay. okay. So why, is, why are these the last days? All right. Well, one of the reasons they're the last days, Greg, is because so many things have come together that have been predicted not only by Scripture, but in the last 2,000 years, particularly the last couple hundred years, by Bible commentators that are going to happen in the last days, yeah. such as the rebirth of the state of Israel in 1948, the preparations yeah. to build a third temple, the lack of a world leader and things right. like that, um, the lack of a superpower, the Ezekiel 38 scenario getting yeah. together. So a lot of things are happening that we've been promoting, predicting will happen, and they're happening in front of our very eyes right now. You did a message, what was the title? It was uh, Seven Reasons Why We're Nearing the End. Yeah, Seven could, Signs of the Last Days. Yeah, could yeah. you give us those seven signs? Sure. You sure. probably, you've already touched on a few. Yeah, the first one is, of course, Israel coming back to its own homeland. You think that's the biggest of all By the far. signs? The By super far. sign, numero, if you numero, will? Numero uno. Numero Why uno. is that so important? Because nothing else can happen until Israel comes back to yeah. their ancient homeland. It all revolves around them. In the last days, the Bible says they will come back in unbelief of Jesus. They will be in the world spotlight, too. Yeah. That's happened. Number two, they will build a third temple. There's preparations for doing this right now. That is one of the signs of the end. A third thing we see is the coalition in Ezekiel 38 and 39 of seven nations that are going to attack Israel in the last days. Interestingly enough, the stage is pretty much set. You've got Russia and Iran, for example, who have never once in the history of humanity, these two geographical areas, uh, been in a military alliance. They are today for That's the first true. time. And we see that miraculously. That's a recent development. Very recent. And then we find out who's not there. What I'll tell you what's really interesting is that here, if you're, you're writing 2,600 years ago, Ezekiel, but you don't mention any of the nations bordering Israel as part of this last day scenario. So it's who's also absent from that is interesting too. Uh, nations like Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, they're not part of this. Hmm. That's number, uh, number four. And then what we've got also is the lack of a superpower in the world because yeah. when that battle happens, no, uh, nobody can or will help Israel at that particular time. And so they're not afraid of coming down and attacking Israel because there's no country to intervene, yeah. which also leads to the next one, the lack of any world leader, which we really have a lack of that in both political parties worldwide today. So no world leader filling the vacuum for this final yeah. antichrist gonna come. And then number seven, the amazing one is the rise of modern technology, of yes. course, to allow these things to be fulfilled. B besides Israel coming back in 48, the other six things have only happened in the last few years in our day and mm. age, and that's why we get excited. But what's interesting, we've had commentators for the last 2000 years predicting these days would come to pass, yeah. and here they are. Yeah, so right now, man, I'll tell you, over in the Middle East, it's hot. I it, mean, it, we're, it we're at war. The, yes, America, the United States of America has declared war on ISIS. Yes. And then a, a new group just popped up that you and I were talking about the other day we'd never even heard of before. Yeah, the Kardashians. I mean, the, the, I'm sorry. The, the, oh, my. The Khorasans. The Khorasans. The Khorasans. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It, I, I thought it said Kardashians. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, so, and I think sometimes... You know, we think, oh, here's ISIS, okay, right. or here's this new group. But actually, there's so many groups. What we're dealing with in a broad spectrum is Islamic terrorism. Exactly. And I, so I think it's a mistake, don't you, when someone stands up and says, you know, these people are not Muslims. Yeah. Well, aren't they? Yes, they are. In fact, uh, the first thing that came out of our president's mouth is, uh, they've hijacked, well, John Kerry, who served in Vietnam, by the way, who hijacked a, he has to always mention that, who, it's this peaceful religion that's been hijacked. Even President George oh. W. Bush exactly. said Islam was they've a peaceful all, all said religion. It. And that was the first line out of President Obama's this last yeah. week. This is not Islam, what's happening. Actually, it is Islam. It's yeah. Islam from the very get-go, how it started, how it continued. And that's why this IS group, Islamic State, right. believes they are the original Islam. They are doing what Muhammad right. did and his immediate followers. What are the names of some of the other groups that are engaged in Islamic terrorism, not just in the Middle East, but around the world, places like Indonesia, et cetera? Yeah, okay, we've got in Lebanon, southern Lebanon, Hezbollah, the party of God. They're an Iranian group. Right. You've got in the Gaza Strip, Hamas, who was fighting Israel sure. for 50 days. Then, of course, you've got Al-Qaeda. Yeah. Now, these Khorasans, that this new group... Who we heard was done. Yeah, yeah. But they're not done. No, no. They're, they're still there too. Yeah. And then you've got also IS, the Islamic State, 
And then you've got other, various other you know, Islamic groups around the world. There was groups in Indonesia that are pretty well funded yeah. in that. But the bottom line is they all believe one thing, Greg, that mm -hmm. Islam is going to take over the world. There's going yeah. to be a, a, a worldwide caliphate or Israel. Or, Define uh, Islam a caliphate. Ruling. Okay, a caliphate is a political religious system where Islam rules everything. Yeah. The way you live your life, what you do, uh, how you act every day, and that sort of thing. It controls literally everything of Didn't your life. Didn't they even talk about flying their flag over the White House? Correct. Yeah, yeah. correct. And so actually we've seen that the IS flag fly in, in places. Someone actually brought it to the White House in the, well, in the area. And then, of course, it's been on the Temple Mount, too, yeah. in Jerusalem. So it's, it's a scary thing. Now, these, all people have, these people have one thing in common. They're going to control the world someday. That's yeah. what they believe. That's what they believe. But of course, we know that's not what the scripture teaches, Ain't gonna happen, no. but that's their agenda. And we're not saying that everyone who happens to be Muslim embraces this, no. but there are many peaceful Muslims in America and around the world. But there are a radicalized group that, that believe they're doing the will of Allah and, and they want world conquest. Yeah, what's interesting, why, what it draws people, Greg, they have a structure, a structured belief system. You know, right. we grew up in school today learning we're you know, have a common ancestor as the right. ape. There's no purpose for existence. Yeah. IS is giving them a purpose for existence. Yeah. There's a God, there's an end of history yes. where they will be in control. That's what draws these people. Even young people. Austrian teenagers, teenage girls. Well, Did you see that in Facebook? Was yeah, and some, American, and some uh, Americans. Americans are involved. Maybe more Brits are involved. Exactly, yeah. But yeah. Uh, they're, they're using social media. Yep. They're producing fairly high quality films. Yep. They're out there with their tweets, you know, updating people. And a lot of young people are going, wow, this is something to believe in. Yep. You know, we've worked so hard to remove God from our culture in England, even in America, that's happening as well. And so there's this big vacuum. And so along comes a group that says, we know God, Allah, yep. and this is what you should do. And, you know, they've kind of made for some jihad a little bit cool, haven't they? They have, actually, yeah. And yeah. they've been very clever with social media, yeah. particularly IS, the way they've been recruiting in that. Yeah. All of a sudden, you know, a few months ago, they were a junior varsity terrorist group. Right. Now they're the worst enemy we've seen since, you know, when? The Middle Ages or something. Yeah, that's right. And so how, how do you think this fits into the prophetic puzzle? What's happening maybe at this moment in time? Okay, what, what's happening right now are the players are moving into position. It's yeah. almost like a play. You know, have you yeah. ever been in a play? Before the curtain goes up, you yeah. have to hit your mark, and then once the mark is hit, then the curtain goes up. Yeah. Players are moving around backstage ready to hit their mark. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing, they're showing the fact there's no world leadership, no world leader, that Israel is the enemy of everybody. Because mm -hmm. again today at the United Nations, who was the whipping boy? It was Israel. Yeah. Iran, Israel, Turkey talked about Israel. And the U.S. gives this faint praise to Israel. But then yeah. Obama, from his lips the other day, Israelis got to, you know, learn not to, you know, B A X Y Z, and so the problem is yeah. again uh, the stage is being set for Israel to be in the crosshair, center stage for the final countdown, right. as it were. So let's look at the big picture. I sort of pull the camera back now and okay. and look at all those prophetic events because we hear words like rapture, antichrist, tribulation period, uh, Magog, um, second coming, battle of Armageddon, second coming, uh, new earth, uh, new Jerusalem. You know. And I think some people are like, oh, where does this all fit and how does it happen? So maybe just a flyover. Give us those events in, chrono in chronological order. How much time do I have? <laughs> flyover for the <laughs> a, a Very much flyover. Okay. In the next event on the prophetic calendar will be the rapture of the church, right. the catching away of And believers. you wrote a book on it. Yeah, called The, called rapture. the rapture. Yeah, called The Rapture. Yes, yeah. so it was very creative. And we're going to get to that topic. Yeah, also another book called I Know Greek. <laughs> you talk about it. We, won't, we won't talk about that. Anyway, um, the rapture of the church, let's explain what that is. Two things happen simultaneously. Number one, the dead in Christ, the believers mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ, those who are in the grave right now, their spirits are with the Lord, are risen from the dead. They're brought from the dead. Their spirits and bodies unite, number mm -hmm. one. At the same time, those who are alive are caught up, harpazo, rapier, to meet the Lord in the air. Okay, let me just stop you there because I've already had a few questions on that since yep. we're on the topic because people have a lot of questions about kind of the resurrection body right. and what that passage means. Uh, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Right. And then which we who are alive and remaining will be caught, caught up, up together with them <clears throat> right. in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Okay, so when a Christian dies, their body goes into the ground. Correct. Where does their spirit go? In the presence of the Lord immediately. Absent from the body, Second Corinthians yeah. chapter 5, verse right. 8 says, at home or immediately in the presence of the yes. Lord. 
We have that taught a number of times in Scripture. Philippians 1, 21 to 23, Paul says, I'm in a straight betwixt two. Yeah. That's the King Jimmy language. In other words, I'm having a hard time figuring out what I want to do. If yeah. I die, I can be with Christ, which yes. is far better. He thought he'd be immediately with Christ. And Stephen, remember the martyr, Acts 7:59. Yeah. he's dying by stony. He looks up and what yeah. does he see? Jesus Christ standing at the right hand of God right. the Father, welcoming him. Yes. So immediately we're in the presence of the Lord in some type of form. What yeah. type of form is debatable? We don't know. People we ask, well, we don't know. do we have a body... Maybe, Maybe an intermediate, but we actually Possibly. don't know. We don't know. Not it's clear. all good, though, right? It, no, it's perfect. Hey, we're, we're in heaven. We're, we're in God's presence, and it's wonderful, but we don't know what form we'll be in. Three yeah. views, you know, either an intermediate body. Uh, some people believe that uh, the full body is given there. I don't. The glorified body. Yeah. Or some people believe we'll just be spirits in heaven, because think about it, Greg. Yeah. In the unseen realm, God doesn't have a body. True. Angels don't have a body, yeah. yet they function, so somehow we might be yeah. able to function. I don't know. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. We're going to be in his presence. Okay, we don't so care. believer dies, goes to heaven. Correct. But the believers here uh, who are alive when the rapture happens, they're caught up caught to, up meet to meet the Lord. That's the rapture. As they're being caught up, they're changed or transformed or translated. The mortal will right. put on immo immortal. The corruptible will put on incorruption. Right. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58 tells us that. And we're not all sleepy, says we'll be changed right. in the moment. And quink, okay, so we're eye. in heaven. Right. Now what? Well, on earth, what's going to happen? Ugh. Revelation 6 through 18, you don't want to be there. The Great Tribulation, the 70th week of Daniel, the last seven years where the, literally the wrath of God comes to the earth. And it yeah. almost sounds like an oxymoron, Greg, because it says the wrath of the Lamb. Yeah. They understand it's the wrath of the Lamb of God that happens on the face of the earth. Right. So the, we have the Antichrist emerge at, at the beginning of the Tribulation. Right. One thing that sometimes surprises people is the tribulation actually begins somewhat peacefully, doesn't very, it? Very much so. He's seen as a man of peace, a mouth speaking great things, yeah. a great orator. He convinces yeah. people. He's, He's not going to be dressed like head to toe in black no, with steam no, 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 coming no, off no, him. No, 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 Darth no. Vader theme playing no. in the background. Bum, 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 bum. No, we're not going to have it. No, 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 no. Okay, we know the two. We know the two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw water on you. Okay, stop. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Darth, cool it. All right, uh, now, what's going to happen? This person is going to be literally the last person you'd expect to be yeah. this antichrist. And probably he'll look like, you know, either a librarian or the guy who reads your, you know, your, your meter outside, you know, yeah. your gas meter or something. Someone who doesn't look the part. Yeah. But all of a sudden, he's going to change literally like from Clark yeah. Kent into Superman. He's going to have all the answers for the world. Yeah. He's going to come up in obscurity. A satanic Superman. Exactly. As it would come up in obscurity, but he's going to have all the answers and people are going to believe him. Yeah. So he emerges. There's a time of peace. In fact, the scripture even says through peace, he will deceive many. Exactly. Yeah. And so he emerges. But then uh, what like where does the abomination of desolation fit into all this? Because uh, it's mentioned in Matthew 24 and it even says, let the reader understand. That is the sign, actually, the mm -hmm. one sign we know we're the, in, near the end. Daniel 12, 11 tells yeah. us. Well, from when the time the abomination that causes desolation mm -hmm. takes place, you can count 1,290 days or three and a half years, and then yeah. the second coming of Christ to the earth takes place. Yeah. And Jesus said, this is the sign, Matthew 24, 15, when you see right. the abomination that causes desolation. What it is, it's a defiling of the temple. Yeah. The Holy of Holies in the temple, it is, uh, you know, removing the sacrifices, stopping them, putting something abominable in the yeah. place of the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was, and then basically desolating God's people, the Jews at right. that time. And that is something that is um, going to happen in the future. That's why a yeah. temple needs to be built as the sign. Are you guys bored? I didn't think so. We're, good. We're not good. Okay, so, because um, this is such an exciting subject. Yeah, okay, so we have the rapture. Right. We have the beginning of the tribulation, effectively inaugurated by Antichrist, comes off as the man of peace, shows his true colors at the abomination of desolation. Okay, so we're in the second half of the tribulation. Right. Now what's going on? Uh, literally, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 21, it's a time of great distress or great tribulation, never yeah. been since the beginning of humanity or ever shall be. Right. The wrath of God is poured out on the world. And you read about the seal judgments in the book of Revelation, the mm -hmm. trumpet judgments, the bowl judgments, yeah. one judgment, one fourth of the people of the world are killed, another one third of the people are killed. Hailstones weighing 100 yeah. pounds, fiery hailstones come yeah. from heaven. And people will, at one time, Greg, will want to die, but yeah. they can't. Right. And yet, you know what they'll do? They'll still shake their face to God. Yeah. Still people won't believe. It's sad. Yeah. It's horrific. And then we read about 144,000. So are right. those Jehovah's Witnesses then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I think they'll witness for Jehovah any time when <laughs> yeah. they're there. But they're not, no. They're, because they claim that. They, yeah, I know they do. Yeah, they're, no, they're Jewish believers, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes yeah. of Israel that are sealed. because at this Believers time, in Jesus. Believers in Jesus Christ. Because at this time, when we're gone, the eyes of the Israelis will be open. There'll be a great yeah. revival among Israel. And he will set apart 12,000 of each of the 12 tribes to be like 12, you know, 144,000 great glories going around the world. They'll speak Hebrew in every language, yes. though. So let's loop back. They may know Be Greek. I don't know if they're going to <laughs> Let's loop back because now you're referencing the Magog attack against Israel and what happens to Israel in the aftermath. So where does the attack of Magog, and, and first of all, who do you think Magog may be? Okay, well, first of all, it's Gog. Gog is the leader. Yeah. That could be a title. Uh, he, it, it, it could be a name of someone more like a title from the land of Magog. Yes. Uh, with Rosh, which is probably modern-day Russia. There's yeah. seven nations there that are going to They've attack. certainly become a lot more aggressive of late. Yeah, yeah. Now, with the big time. Yeah. And that's interesting because... Yeah. The really person who is the world leader today is Vladimir Putin. Let's face yeah. it, he's got any type of chutzpah there in the yeah. world. And he rides around on a horse without a shirt yeah, on. He's, yeah, I know. He's had a lot of plastic surgery. that picture? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. As I recall, you have that as your iPhone <laughs> screensaver. Remember, you gave it to me. That's why I got it. I did. Yes, you did. I, I, I like that, too. I've got this it. is a joke, by the way. Yes. So, okay. okay, so you think, I mean, they come from the north of they Israel. They come from the north. And, that's the far north. And they have their allies. And one of the allies that is mentioned is Persia. And Persia is... Yeah, yeah, modern day Iran. Yeah. It was 1935 was called Persia until that. That's so right. it's Iran, Iran. It's a fairly recent development Very that they're recent called development. Iran. And now here's what's amazing though. In 1973, during the Yom Kippur yeah. War, the nation that saved Israel in the Middle East was the nation of Iran. They were Israel's best friend mm -hmm. in the 70s, some 40 years ago. Shows how things have changed. Big time change, because when the Shah was deposed, yeah. the Ayat Ayatollah took over, now they become an Islamic Republic. Look yeah. what we've got now, we've got, you know, the worldwide terrorist leading country. And so it shows how things can and will change because the Bible said so. In fact, there's a funny story Chuck told. In fact, at the end of his life, he told about every I week. interviewed Chuck at yep. this very desk. Did he tell that story? Which one? The one about the when he got to, it was, this is interesting. He's up in, in Israel right after the 73 war. Yeah. And he's talking to some generals. We're talking about Chuck Smith, of Chuck course. Chuck Smith, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the one you interviewed, right? Yes. I remember here. Well, I, not everyone may know who Chuck is, so we're just. They don't? Well, not every person oh. on earth, you know, so. <laughs> Go ahead. Does anybody here? Oh, anyway. I think okay. most of them know okay, who Chuck okay, is. Okay, anyway. He, yeah. But anyway, people are watching this on the internet. I got you. I got you. That's true. Yeah. Pastor Chuck Smith, our pastor, yeah. basically he was talking to some Israeli generals. Mm -hmm. And he said, fellas, the group you have to be worried about is not Lebanon, right next door, not Syria, but Iran. Mm -hmm. He said they laughed at him. Mm -hmm. He said, without Iran, we wouldn't have won the 73 war. They're our best friend. Chuck says, no, worry about them. A few years later, the Shah was deposed. The Ayatollah yeah. Tola took over. Mm. Chuck started getting all these phone calls from Israel, from all these generals. Yeah. What's going to happen next, you know? <laughs> and, and he yeah. said, it's in the book, you know? Yeah, he read it right he here. Read, he read it, it's in the book. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, so we have, may, we have Gog attacking Israel. Correct. But they're not successful, are they? No. Though they have a massive military, it, it's, God intervenes. Yeah, it's interesting. They come from the four directions, the north, south, the east, mm -hmm. and the west. Here's this little tiny nation you can barely see on a map. In fact, yeah. the nation is so small, you have to write the name out in the Mediterranean Sea. You can't even write it in the landmass. It's yeah. so small, the size of New Jersey. All these nations are, are going to attack it because Israel has something they want and something they need. So they're going to come down from north, south, east, and west yeah. and attack. And God basically does a rope-a-dope with them. As soon as they get in the promised land, that's when he judges them. That's when yeah. all this... Uh, uh, earthquakes happen, you know, the hails from heaven and that, and they become like some of the armies in the Old Testament. They start fighting and killing each other. Yeah. But what's going to happen is the people at that time will know it is a supernatural event, and that's yeah. to come. Wow. So where do you think that fits chronologically? Okay, we have the rapture, we have the emergence of Antichrist, we have the tribulation period. Where's the invasion of Gog into Israel? Yeah, probably sometime after the rapture, but yeah. not very long after that. I kind of think that too. Yeah. The, the problem is it's not that clear, the timing yeah. of that. I taught a class on this. We came up with well, actually 12 different views that Christians hold. Yeah. But the best one seems to be, we'll qualify that, right after the uh, rapture of the church, sometime right after that. Okay, let's come back to that subject of the rapture. Okay. Uh, what is the rapture? Uh, we've already dealt with it, but just kind of quick, give me a quick definition Oh, okay, here's an argument. Well, you know, the, the word rapture is not found in the Bible, and therefore this is something that people made up. Well, is that true? Is the word rapture found in the Bible? I'm looking at it right now. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. 
then we which are living and remaining to, uh, until the coming of the Lord will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And in this manner, we shall always be with the Lord. Here it yeah. is, Greg. Yes. I'm just posing questions. No way. What is that, Latin? That's Latin, yeah. It's a so Latin word. So if yeah. you're reading a Latin translation, it's the word rapturus? No, well, more or less. It's a, it's a verb. Repere, it's a verb. It means to snatch, catch away. Uh, that we made it a noun, the rapture, but yeah. it means to you know forcibly. But it comes to the original word. Is it harpazo? Harpazo, very good. Yeah, that's because you read Greek. Yeah, and the Greek yeah. is right here that I yeah. read. You want to hold that up to the camera? Okay. Yes. Okay, so the rapture is a catching away right. of people to meet the Lord. Okay, here's one person on Facebook asked yeah. me this question. I said they could ask us questions. She says, "I'm confused about post and pre-tribulation rapture." Both sides have a good argument. Which one should I believe? So what are the different views that Christians hold on the topic of the rapture, including some who would say there is no rapture? Yeah, there, there's actually seven of them that good Christians hold. These are in your book, aren't they? Of course they are. Yeah, yeah, and they're all responded to. Yeah. Uh, the first one, there is no rapture. Yes. The second one is called the partial rapture theory, and that yeah. is only... Only part of your body goes up or something? <laughs> no, no. Only, well, literally, yeah. Like your head, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, only part of the body of Christ goes up. That's true. Yeah. Partial rapture, only the spiritual Christians. Yeah. And then those that believe all the Christians go up, you've got those that believe the pre trib view. Yeah. Okay, that's view number three. So those, before the tribulation. Before the tribulation, yeah. the mid-trib, halfway through, that's next view. There's a new view called the pre-wrath, which is basically mm -hmm. three quarters of the way through or 18 months yes. through the last seven years. Yes. Then there's the post-trib view at the end of, this, of the seven years. So you got four views within the last seven years people believe. And the last view says the Bible teaches the rapture, but we don't have enough evidence to know when it is. Yeah. Now, what I've done, I've looked at all of them. And Greg, let me tell you, this is I'll just give you a little bit of background. When I was, I wrote this basically 10 years ago, I was doing a course, I was living in Australia at the time. I spent six months looking at everything, best in, arguments I could And find. you approached it, I remember hearing yeah. you say, objectively. Well, I tried In to. other words, okay, I, yeah. what is the Bible really saying about yeah, this? Yeah, because actually, I'd never really gone into great detail in this in the yeah. past. I always believed pre-trip, but I, yeah. okay, well, if it, if, you know, I'll let the chips fall where they may. I, I'm working, I wasn't even working with Calvary, then. I worked with some Baptist church there, so, you know, if I come up with something yeah. different, fine. I came to the conclusion the pre-trip is not only the, the correct answer, all of the others have fatal arguments. They, they can't work. They, they just don't work for many, many reasons. The post-trib, the mid-trib, the pre-wrath, the partial rapture, the no rapture idea have, you know, problems that you can't really, mm -hmm. you can't really um, answer and deal with. And so the pre-trib has issues, but every question has a legitimate, reasonable answer. The others do not. And so that's why I was more and more convinced I am every day that that's the correct view. So make a case right now for the pre-tribulation rapture. And let's preface it by saying... We believe that there are, are good believers that hold different views. This is not yep. what we would call an essential for salvation. No. You know, what is that expression in, uh, in essentials, unity, and non-essentials, uh, liberty, yeah, and, and then in all things charity? Exactly. So yep. in the essentials, like the death of Christ, his resurrection yep. from the dead, the authority of Scripture, those are essentials. Correct. We Correct. don't deviate. Yeah. But uh, when we come to the rapture, okay, if you hold a pre-trib, a mid-trib view, we say, hey, we can still be brothers of and sisters in the Lord, but but we just happen to believe in a pre-tribulation exactly. rapture. Exactly. So tell me why we believe that. Okay, for a number of reasons. Number one, 1 Thessalonians 1, says we're waiting for the Son to come out of heaven who will save us from the wrath to come. Now, 1 Thessalonians was the first letter the, the Apostle Paul wrote to a church that we know of chronologically, waiting for the Son to come who will save us from the coming wrath. Well, what's the coming wrath he's talking about? We believe it's his final seven-year period. Yeah. And then that same letter he writes, 4 through 18 of 1 Thessalonians, about the catching up of believers, all right? The rapture of the church. And then in 5, 9, he says, God has not appointed us to wrath, right. but to salvation or deliverance through Jesus Christ. Right. So he begins the letter by saying, we're going to be escaping this coming wrath. Right. He tells us in 4, 13 through 18, how we're going to escape. Then he punctuates it again at the end saying, he hasn't appointed us to wrath because see, Greg, Revelation 6 through 18 is the wrath of God. This yes. is God's judgment on the earth. And if we're not appointed to wrath, we don't need to be there and we're not gonna be there. Yeah, that's right. So Amen to that one? You like guys right. like that? Okay, good. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah. and really, is yeah. there any precedent in the Bible for God's wrath when he was judging people like Sodom and Gomorrah? Take it. Or like the flood? Noah, exactly. Uh, 
Did God judge his people with the other people, or did no. he deliver his he delivered people? It. He delivered his people. And again, like in the days of Noah, Noah at the ark, Sodom and Gomorrah, he got Lot and his family out of yeah. Sodom. And so there's that precedent that is set there, because this is, again, this last seven-year period is the wrath of, a, of God on the world who has been a Christ-rejecting world. Yeah. It's going to be a time of tremendous trouble like the world has never seen before, and that's why it's, we have not been appointed to wrath again, right. so we're not going to be here. What happens to babies and small children at the rapture? Okay, the ba uh, 1 Corinthians 7.14 says the children of believers will go with them because it, somehow, if, let's say you're a, a Christian and you've got a spouse who's a Christian or even a spouse who's a non-Christian, your children who are below any age of accountability will go with the rapture for a And we don't reasons. know when the age of accountability no, it's, is. it's different for every person. Yeah. But, but face it, Greg, it wouldn't be much of a blessed hope if the parents went and their young kids were left behind, would it? Absolutely. No, no. no. And so in some sense, we set apart or sanctify our children by having a Christian in the family. Sure. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians 7. And so the children of believers, yes. Now of unbelievers, don't know. The, the, we're not, we don't know on that. We certainly don't have an assurance. No, we do not We as all. believers can say, no, we know we're going to go. Exactly. We know our children are going to yep. go uh, that are before the age of accountability. But if our, even our children whom we love, if they just were older and flat out rejected Christ, yep. well, we can't be nope. assured, you know, not at all. certainly not nope. that they would you, go. Nope. So, okay, what about, here's a question actually from the folks watching right now. What happens if a believer is in a backslidden state and the rapture takes place? They're, they're taken. You think so? I know so. First Corinthians 15, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Right. Who were the Corinthians? One of the most carnal churches going, but they are in Christ. Sometimes that book could be translated as First Californians. Yes, exactly it? right. Yeah. The First Californians. <laughs> yeah, the cruddy Corinthians and the cruddy Californians. Yeah. That's true. They had every sin imaginable within the church, yet when Paul gets to, to chapter 15, he said, we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. If yeah. you're in Christ, you're going to be changed. Interesting thing, too. I mean, we talked about Lot. And the Bible even calls him righteous Lot. Yeah, it does. Man, when you read his account yeah, in Genesis, <laughs> and those guys yeah. come to his door, and they're yeah. and he's being visited by angels, and the people are saying, send him out so we can have sex with yeah, them. Yeah. And Lot says, here, take my virgin daughters. Exactly. You've never yeah. known him. And it's like, yeah. hey, I'm glad I'm not Lot's daughter. Yeah, exactly. You know, so he was a, he was a compromiser. Very much but so. But yet... He's declared righteous. Yes, yeah. He, he, that doesn't justify no. compromise or sin. No, it doesn't. But what it does say is God's grace and love is massive. It, it is. Because let's remember something, Greg. According to Proverbs 6, 16, the sin that God hates most is pride. And, you know, yeah. what someone's got a proud look when the rapture comes. And a lot right. of people will be left behind with that. But they're not going to be. All change. Here's a question that's texted. After the rapture, uh, can you still change your mind and be saved? Okay, so here I am. I, I rejected Christ. Rapture happens. You did? I'm, no, I'm not. Oh, well, just, I'm sorry. I'm putting myself in oh, the position of okay. someone who would say, right. oh, okay. so, you know, now I, all my Christian friends are gone, and I realized they were all right, and it was all true. How do I get saved? Because some people will say, well, you know, the Bible teaches the Holy Spirit is taken off the earth during the tribulation period, but that isn't true, is no, it? No, not, not at all, because how can people get saved without the work of the Holy Spirit? Exactly. It's going to start with zero, but there'll be a multitude of people saved. And actually, Revelation yeah. 6 talks about these souls under the altar who yeah. were slain for the testimony of Christ during this period. Yeah. There'll be a great revival during this time. The problem is many people have to pay with their lives, yeah. but they will come to Christ. And a lot of them probably be churchgoers, people who've gone to church, right. who've listened to like what we're saying tonight, and hopefully it's none of you. They think, well, when it happens, then I'll, then I'll, you know, I'll change and I'll believe in Jesus. Yeah. Well, um, you don't know if you'll even be around at that time. Like many people want to, you know, repent at the 11th hour. They die yeah. at 1030. They don't even get the chance. And so the point is, now is the day of salvation. But there'll be people believing. In fact, multitudes will believe in Christ. Maybe some people think, well, as soon as I hear that trumpet, I'll pray really fast. You better be really Real fast. Because <laughs> yeah. it's in a moment in the twinkling Blink. of an eye. That's not yeah. even the blinking of an yeah, eye. No, the twinkling of it before it even blinks. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Okay, so one thing we didn't get to, coming back to the tribulation okay. promo, so we're in heaven, but here's this big war, mm. the battle of Armageddon. Right. When does that happen, and who are the forces that are fighting with each other in that war? All right, it seems like a campaign, not mm -hmm. just one battle, mm -hmm. a worldwide campaign, and it culminates in Revelation 19 when these mm -hmm. armies of this final Antichrist, what they're doing, 
they're going to come to Jerusalem because remember what he's trying to do. Yeah. He's trying to eliminate the Hebrew, the Jewish people, because if he can do that, then the promises of God are of none effect. Yeah. It seems at that time, as they come and get to surround Jerusalem, that's when the Lord intervenes. We come back with them from heaven, but there'll be a number of battles going on. Yeah. They talk about kings from the east, yeah. a 200 million man army that'll happen. There weren't 200 million people on the face of the earth when John wrote Revelation down. No, there weren't. And that's and what's amazing... Let me just loop back to that okay, for a moment okay. because there's the preterist view yeah. that effectively says these things have already happened, so stop looking for them in the future. Yeah, yeah. There were not 200 no. million people no, no, no. and all these events have never transpired never, in any way, no, shape, or form. No, no. But you know what's interesting? In the 60s, Mao Zedong, when he was ruling China, he yeah. said if my back were up against the wall, yeah. it is now, of course, he's dead. If my back were up against the wall, I can field in China an army of 200 million he men. He actually used that number. He did, he used that exact number in the 60s. Is there any other military that could field an army of that size? <sighs> Maybe India. Yeah. And and but no, they're but China, China's, China, China it's, for sure. It's there. It's, yeah, yeah. So they could be the kings of the East. They very, could be China, India, possibly together, even maybe Japan too. So who the are they fighting with? Well, they're fighting with the armies, the Antichrist. In other okay, words, so these ten nations, you know, and, and sometimes we get excited, we jump the gun yeah, and we we yeah. think this <laughs> is the it or that is it. We don't really know who the ten nations are yet, do we? No, no. They're in Western Europe. We don't know who the final ten we will be. We know there'll be ten. Yeah. We don't know who they're going to be. Yeah. And just ten. Could the United States of America no. be one of those no. nations? No. Why no, do you think Western that? Europe. It's in Western Europe. Because the U.S. is not in Bible prophecy. We're yeah. not there. Why is that? Well, there's a number of possibilities. Uh, number one, the one I like, is we had a great revival here and there's nobody left in the country. Yeah, that'd be nice. You like that one? All right. That's my favorite one. <laughs> That's... Um, and there's some om ominous ones, though, too. What's that? Some ominous scenarios. Number yeah. one, we cannot or will not become involved, or something's happened to the country where we... We are already declining as a um, superpower. Big time, big time. Especially economically. Yeah. And in some ways militarily yep. as well. Yeah. And, uh, and China is emerging as an economic they superpower, sure not to mention being a military superpower. Indeed, indeed they are. And uh, so... Yeah, whether we will even exist as a country, we don't know. Because, yeah. you know, empires rise and fall. They, they do. come and go. And, yeah, every uh, nation has a shelf life. They sure do. And we don't know. And it's a, it's a sad thought, too. It we is. don't like to see this. We but We love it's, our country. We do. But it's, it's, the, it's the reality that's there. So we don't know. But, no, it'll be centered in Western Europe. It's the old Roman Empire revived in that ge geographical area. Right. Now, you know, we hear the rapture, the second coming, the coming of the Lord. Sometimes people get confused because on one hand we read about he comes like a thief in the night, you know, then we read every eye will see him. Right. As the lightning shines from the east to the west, says our Lord, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So are we talking about two events or one event here? Uh, two specific comings in the Lord. The first time is for the church, yeah. taking us back to heaven to be yes. rewarded. The second is with the church coming back to the earth. So there's two comings of the Lord, uh, the rapture of the church, yeah. and then when the resurrection of the dead happens of the believers in Christ, and then seven years later he comes back with us, we come back with him to set up his kingdom. Now, um, there's passages that speak of the rapture. Every time it speaks of the rapture, it's only believers it talks about, it's only blessings. The second coming passages are all passages of judgment. There's two distinct comings of the Lord. They are different enough to see two distinct comings. Then when you put the totality of scripture together, yep. it only makes sense that it only fits. He comes before the seven, last seven years for the church, comes back with the church at the end. That's right. Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. Yep. And that's us. Yep, sure is. So you're going to get that Holy Land tour. Yeah. Led by Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Landing on the Mount of Olives, by the way, too. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so then we hear this phrase, the millennium. Right. When is the millennium and what is the millennium? Millennium is a Latin word meaning thousand. It's a thousand year reign of Christ on the earth when he comes back. Yeah. When he returns, Matthew 25 said he's going to judge the nations, yeah. you know, separate the sheep from the goats. Mm -hmm. And that means there'll be people believed that's still alive during the end of the great tribulation period. Mm -hmm. They will go into the millennium in bodies yeah. like you and I have. We have been changed. We've been given glorified so bodies. So here we are. We've come back with the Lord. Correct. We're in our glorified, glorified body, bodies. And then there are these folks coming in that are in still basic human exactly. bodies. Exactly. Because they have believed during that period. They have survived, too. They've survived. So when would they get their glorified bodies? Well, that's a good question. We don't really know. We're I know. We sure. don't, do we? Uh, in the book of Revelation, there's a couple possibilities, yeah. but we don't really know. book of Revelation talks about eating the tree, you know, from the, the tree of life that's there for, for the healing of the nation. Some people think it's that's what gives them the eternal life. And that whether they get mm -hmm. a... Uh, we don't Interesting. Know. Bottom line, we don't know. 
Yeah. We're not told. So during this millennial reign, Satan is chained up for a thousand years. Why doesn't God just take him out then? Why have him chained up for a thousand because years? Because he's going to show the world something that the world has always doubted about God. In other words, if I only knew that God existed, I would believe. If, no. if God only appeared to me, then I would believe. Well, God, right. there's no atheist in the millennium. The Lord Jesus is ruling. But at the end of the millennium, there will be children born to these people yeah. who started the millennium who have not made a decision. It's a the thousand world. years. A thousand years. That's a yeah. long time. Yeah. And a great majority of them will actually rebel against God when he's released. It is. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You know, sense. people talk about, oh, it's all about your environment. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you had a perfect environment, you'd be a better person. Hey, how about the perfect environment of Christ himself ruling, the animal kingdom subdued, yep. the knowledge of the Lord filling the earth, and people rebel. That's insane. It is insane, but yeah. see, sin doesn't make sense. No, the heart doesn't. is deceitfully wicked and desperately wicked above all things, Jeremiah says. Who can know it? Yeah. And so sin is illogical. It's irrational. It doesn't make that's sense. Right. But people are going to rebel against God anyway because they want to run the show, Greg, and that's, that's the sad thing. The Lord keeps offering salvation, but that's they right. keep slapping his hand away. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. Okay, we have the rapture possibly immediately after. It could maybe precede it, sure. but we don't know. The attack of Gog against Israel. God turns back Gog. A revival breaks out in Israel. We have emergence of Antichrist, which is peaceful in the beginning of the tribulation period. Abomination of desolation takes place. Now God's judgment is coming down full force. Then we have the second coming of Christ at the Battle of Armageddon. Correct. And now we have the millennium for a thousand, thousand years. years. Yep. Okay, now what? Okay, at the end of the thousand years, there's this rebellion by mm -hmm. certain people who were born during the millennial period. That is squashed immediately. Quickly. By, very quickly by yeah. the Lord. And then one of the most ominous parts of Scripture, the great white throne judgment yeah. takes place. Uh, there's a resurrection of the dead, the first resurrection, those who were the, um, everybody who's believed in the Lord from right. that time is raised, Revelation 20, verse 5. And then the great white throne judgment, Greg, where the books are open. And there's various books there. One's the Book of Life. And whoever's name is not found written in the Book of Life, they're cast in the lake of fire where the beast, first antichrist, yeah. false prophet are, and where Satan is also cast in there too. Yeah, I mean, it's a horrific thought, but there are going to be many people cast in that lake of fire because they rejected the living Christ. Let me just interject this. Here's a question from Charlotte. And uh, as a forgiving God and a God of grace, is there a scripture reference or interpretation which gives those not yet in the book of life the hope of a final, final chance to accept God before being thrown into hell? No, in a, in a word. Hebrews 9.27, it's appointed us once to die, and after that, the judgment. Yeah. Look at Luke 16. Remember the rich man and Lazarus story that Jesus yeah. told? Rich man dies. He's in the 80s. He's in torment. Yeah. I mean, if he, he would have loved to come back, but yeah. he had everything in this life going for him, yet he rejected the living God. So no second chance. There's thousands of chances before death, but none after. Indeed. And the way this question is framed, as a forgiving God and a God of grace, which seems to imply, yeah. hey, if they're thrown into hell, thrown into hell, you know, then he's obviously not. But they're kind of missing the big picture because doesn't yeah. the Lord do everything he can yeah, he does. to reach us before? Yeah, in fact, hell was prepared for the devil and his That's angels, right. the Bible says. You know, not, not for humanity. He's done everything he can. But see, what they forget is God's a righteous God, a just God, and sin must be dealt with. We don't have any idea, Greg, what it meant for God the Son to become yeah. a human being to take the penalty of the sins of the world upon himself, to be separated in some sense from God the Father on Calvary's cross, yeah. for you and for me and for everyone else out there. And that's the justice of God, the righteous character of God. But sin has to be paid for. Either Christ pays for our sin or we pay it for, for ourselves. There's yeah. only two choices. Yeah. So uh, here's an interesting question, kind of looping back to the tribulation for a moment. Uh, they asked, do you think the Antichrist is living among us right now? Uh, well, quite possibly, but here's the interesting thing. Mm -hmm. There have been an antichrist from the very beginning. First John 2, that's 18 true. says there are many It's a term that's used yes, in a broad sense. Many antichrists yeah. uh, are already here. Yeah. One antichrist is coming, yes, the final one, the first beast of Revelation chapter 13, right. the political leader, the Gentile political leader. Yeah. There's a second one, a, uh, a false prophet, probably Jewish at that time. But yeah, there's a, there's a good chance because the way, we, now we don't know. We don't want to, we're not date setters. We don't say it has to happen at X period of time. But there's good evidence that he's probably alive today. However, I doubt if he knows that he's going to be that final Antichrist. Hmm. Because remember this, only God knows when the rapture is happening. You think Satan knows? I don't think so. So, we so always you don't think it's some little kid with 666 tattooed no, in his no, forehead? No, no, not like Running that. around with... You saw those movies too. Yeah. I did too, yeah. No. Rottweilers, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> 
What was that, the omen? The omen, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, Damien, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. The, Which yeah. Damien Kyle did not appreciate them using that name. I bet he didn't, did he? yeah, I want to change his name. Anyway, the idea... Damien uh, Kyle's a pastor we know. He's a very good pastor, yeah, too. Yeah, good man. Anyway, what, what would happen is that um, he always, Satan always has to have someone waiting in the wings, because he doesn't yeah. know. Someone's always going to be ready, right. and what he's seemingly going to do is approach this person as Jesus was approached by Satan. Mm -hmm. Jesus rejected going Satan's way, this fool will accept it and become this final antichrist. Yeah. Here's an interesting question from a Sherry. I've been uh, dialoguing with my son, and can you use some specific help and answers regarding replacement theology? What is replacement theology? Yeah, replacement theology is also called supersessionism, and it means this, that Israel, by rejecting Christ, was replaced in God's eternal program mm -hmm. with the New Testament church. Yes. So all the blessings that were given to Israel and promised to them have been now turned over to us yep. and Israel is no longer part of God's plan. Israel has been replaced by the New Testament church. So there's no future for a literal physical nation of Israel in a nutshell. Yeah. So, and this person even asked the question, is it connected to anti-Semitism? Well, it can be. Yeah. Unfortunately, it has been a lot and it has come from the church. We've seen yeah. the, just in the last few months, one of the signs of the last days, the Presbyterian Church of America, uh, they've boycotted, they've divested, and they're sanctioning against Israel. They've yeah. boycotted any, any products from Israel, they're divesting any investments right. in there, and they're sanctioning any group that is investing in Israel because they believe that Israel today is not part of God's program now or in the future. So this shows the importance of what you believe about end times events. Because we can say, well, this doesn't matter at all. We, we said it's not an essential for salvation, but it is still important, isn't it? It's really important because yeah. the way we live our lives, Greg, is yeah. based upon how, what we think is going to happen in the future. If we think Christ yeah. can come at any moment, right. we're going to be ready at any moment. But what if we think he can come, can't come for three and a half years, five and a half years, or seven years? I don't know about you, but if I thought, well, I got a little bit of time, you know, yeah. isn't human nature like you're, you know, you've got a test or a paper to do, you wait till the last minute. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got time to repent, to believe. And so the Bible says now is the day of salvation. That's right. Christ said he's going to come at a time we think not. We always have to be ready. And that's why the imminency of Christ's coming is so, so very important. Yeah, the scripture says, <clears throat> he that has a soul purifies himself yes. even as he is pure. It exactly. has a purifying effect it does. when you know Christ could come back. And I think when you're walking with God, you love it. You embrace it. It's like, hey, yeah, Jesus is coming back. And it's like John said, even so, come Lord Indeed. Jesus. Indeed. But I think when you're not walking with God as you ought to and you hear this message Christ could come back at any time. Could kind of freak you out a little bit, couldn't it? Big time. Yeah. Big time freak. And so it should. It, and it should, yes. Because will you be ready? Yeah. So how does a person prepare themselves for the rapture? In other words, how can a person listening right now be certain that when the rapture comes, and if it indeed happens in our lifetime, how can we know we'll be one of those people caught up to meet the Lord? There's only one way they can know, and they can know, according to 1 John chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. Yeah. He that has the Son of God has life. He that does not have the Son of God does not have life. 1 right. John 5, 13. These things are written that you might know that you have eternal Sorry. life if you believe in the name of the only begotten Son. So a person, Greg, right now, anywhere watching us, listening to us, anywhere in the world, can know they have eternal life at this moment by Sorry. trusting Jesus Christ as their Savior. So if the rapture of the church would come tonight, or they would go to meet the Lord tonight, they would die tonight, they would know they're going to heaven. That's right. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So these are amazing things that we're talking about here. And <clears throat> excuse me. And the main thing is we want to be ready to meet the Lord. And I just wonder right now if there's someone here where a lot of people are watching this on the internet and others will watch us when this is archived uh, later on our website. And so we want to make it possible for those people to make that commitment to Christ. So Don, just maybe give us to us in a, in a nutshell, you know, what is the gospel? We use the word a lot, gospel, gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel simply stated is this, Greg, in 1 Corinthians 15, that Christ... And it's sad that I don't know the answer to that because I am an evangelist. I, I would hope you know. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard you speak. You do know I do, it. I'm kidding. You do it but, very well. Yes. I want to hear you say it. Okay. Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the scripture. He appeared to many people. Yeah. Uh, in other words, he was seen at one place dead, a few days later, he was alive again, and he is alive forevermore, and he 
earlier on Calvary's cross took the penalty of the sins of the world upon himself. So if we believe in him, we trust that, he died in our place so we can have eternal life. So the yep. gospel is basically accepting what Christ has done on our behalf, dying as our substitute, dying in our place so we don't have to suffer. The righteous suffered for the unrighteous, the yep. just for the unjust. That's, in a nutshell, the gospel. Yeah. So as you're listening right now, maybe you've never made that commitment to follow Jesus Christ. And listen, we, we want all of you to be ready to meet the Lord. And, you know, and we may not be raptured. Look, one way or the other, if you're a Christian, you're going to heaven. There's two basic modes of transportation. One will be death, and your spirit will leave your body, and you go to heaven. Or it could be the rapture, and you won't see death at all. But the way to secure this is by having that relationship with God. And, and if you've never asked Christ to come into your life, if you're not sure right now, if you were to die, you would go to heaven. If you don't have the confidence that you're ready for the rapture, then I want to give you an opportunity to believe in Jesus Christ. So why don't we bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, I pray that as we've had this discussion, people would realize this is not fantasy. These are not fairy tales. This is the future because you've said it and you live in the eternal realm and you can speak of the future as accurately as we would speak of the past. In fact, even more accurately, because we forget things, but you never do. So when you say something's going to happen, that can be taken to the bank. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will convict and convince any person that needs to come to you to do so right now. And while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed and we're praying, maybe you would like to ask Christ to forgive you of your sin. Maybe you're not sure if you're a Christian. Or maybe you're not certain that you would be caught up to meet the Lord in the rapture, but you want to be. If you're one of those people and you want to get right with God, if you want Christ to come into your life, if you want your guilt taken away, if you want to be ready for the rapture, would you just stand to your feet right now? And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Just stand up if you want Christ to come into your life, and I'll lead you in a prayer. Stand up right where you are. God bless you. Anybody else, stand up. And I'm going to lead you in this prayer. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Anybody else? Stand up. I think there might be a few more of you. Just stand up and we'll pray this prayer together where you're asking Christ to come into your life. One last moment. If you're going to stand, stand now. All right. So you that are standing and you that are watching, I want you to pray this prayer out loud after me. Just pray this. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, but I know you're a savior and you died on the cross and rose again from the dead for me. Now I turn from my sin and I ask you to come into my life as savior and Lord, as God and friend. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for coming into my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. God bless you guys that prayed that prayer.